right. Thank you very much for keeping it a KBC channel on. This is Good Morning Kenya. If you've just joined us, you're just in time for the very first uh, interview of the day. Uh, my name is Ram Aguko. This morning, I'm joined by members from the Regional Center for Mapping of Resources and for Development, that is RCMRD. They are here to give us more insight concerning what they think about their opinion concerning the big for agenda. This morning our focus will be on two. Being a health Tuesday, we'll be focusing on matters universal health care and we shall incorporate food security and nutrition in the same discussion. Remember, your health is uh, you know, a factor even as you talk about your lifestyle. So health and lifestyle are the same uh, in, in the same breath have an effect on each other. So universal health coverage, uh, food security, that is the discussion this morning. I'm joined by uh, next to me Lillian Dungu. Uh, she is the thematic lead, uh, agriculture and food security. Karibu sana Lillian. Thank you. And uh, to my extreme left, Byron Anangwe, business development and marketing officer. Karibu sana Byron. Good morning and thank you. And uh, your Twitter handles are at RCMRD. Underscore. Okay. Underscore. Yeah. Yes. Uh, your Twitter handle is at <laughs> Lilian Ongoi. Lilian Ongoi. Yes. And uh, yours? At Byron and Angwe. At Byron and Angwe. Tag me also at Ram Aguko. Our official handle is at KBC Television. Use the hashtag Good Morning Kenya. Send us your thoughts and your tweets even as you continue with this morning discussion. Now, let me start first of all by, you know, in, uh, for the benefit of the viewer, in a nutshell, what is RCMRD all about? Byron. Thank you, Ram. Uh, Regional Center for Mapping of Resources for Development is an intergovernmental organization based in Nairobi and uh, we were set up in 1975. Mm -hmm. Our role initially was focusing on land surveying, but as you very well know, land is a cross-cutting issue. Yeah. So today we are focusing on all applications and management of issues relating to land and continuously in all the member countries that we are present, which is 20 of them. Uh, East, Central, and Southern Africa, we are heavily involved in issues of land, and as land is synonymous with issues of agriculture and food security. All right. Yes. And uh, that will be what we will be talking about, agriculture, food security, universal health care. And uh, just in a nutshell, uh, Lillian, there is one aspect that I, I, I would like you to uh, el elaborate for us. You know, agriculture is uh, the single largest uh, employer in the world, providing livelihoods for uh, over 40 percent of today's uh, global population. Uh, it is the largest source of income and jobs for poor rural uh, you know, households. Is there a way that we can be able to improve in the agricultural sector? And Byron, to you, how, how are we doing in terms of uh, achieving universal health care? Let me start with, with you, Lillian. Um, thank you, Ram. Um, one of the things that we can do is to promote more of evidence-based decision making and influencing policies based on sound data and information. And that is what RCMRD is all about, using space, satellites, other observation information to create products and services and information packages that can be used to inform not only decision making at the technical level but also at the policy level. And towards that RCMRD has planned a conference known as the RCMRD International Conference that seeks to bring together all these diverse decision makers from the policy based uh, policy level decision makers that is the high level to the technical people and to the researchers so that they can present and exchange on the in innovations and research that they are doing and link that to the technical people and to the policy makers so that they can do know that if we want to make these decisions, mm -hmm. then there are these sources and products and models that we can use to inform that process. Mm -hmm. And I feel that if there is, if there is uh, evidence backed, policies being made, then there's a chance that we're going to improve our food security situation, mm -hmm. nutrition, employment, and all the things, all the challenges so, that we're facing. So all we need is proper policy and policy making. But now, you know, you know at Data. some point, yeah, we, we, we said, uh, okay, we've had, yep. Kenya's constitution is one of the <laughs> best, right? And it puts to question, see, uh, do we have now the, see, well, 
it's ironical. We have the best constitution. Mm -hmm. We have the proper policies for that, for, for achieving universal health care. Even in terms of the agricultural mm -hmm. sector, do we have the proper policies for that? Mm -hmm. Because you said we need that. Mm -hmm. Byron, let me come to you. How far are we? Universal health care, well, agriculture. Just to go back on your point about uh, policy, mm -hmm. the, the disjoint has been that there's three groups of uh, people we need to engage with, or three communities. Okay. The first one being the policy makers. The second being the technical people, the scientists, and then the last group being the academia. These three groups is a disjoint. They don't talk to each other more. They're talking at each other. The policy makers? The technical yeah, people, the, technical the scientists, people, scientists, and the last group being the academia. academia. They don't uh, they're talking, meet at some point. They're not talking with each other. They're talking at each other. Uh -huh. This The case being that what is being practiced in academia mm -hmm. is not bridging into what the technical people are doing or technical practice is doing and is all bridging into what the policy makers are doing. So the policy makers, if it was a, pol if it was a triangle, mm -hmm. they are the apex. And yes. sometimes what they are passing as policy is not timely. Lillian mentioned something about timely decision and informed decision making. Do you have the right information about if it is your healthcare? What are the people in northern Kenya affected or infected? compared to what are the people in the northern part of Kenya facing. So if we get information, like now Kenya is going into the census uh, 2020, mm. the round of census. Once we get that information and find out what is affecting the people in terms of health, we can be able to better address this. There's no need point of me taking malaria medicine to a place where malaria is not habitable. And, and here, then it puts the question here in terms of research, the amount of research that we, we, uh, we, we put give in practice. into uh, these sec different sectors in terms of health and agriculture. For instance, um, if we look at the major um, infectious diseases or major health um, issues, you'll find what is happening in one corner of Kenya is different from what is happening in another. Our evidence comes from satellite. We take satellite pictures continuously every 30 minutes, every one hour, every weekly and monthly. From these satellite pictures, we are able to determine factors such as temperature. If, it, mm -hmm. if you're looking at a mosquito, for instance, uh, malaria can only exist in a particular climate. Yes. And in that particular climate, then, we are able to see if there is rainfall and there is high temperatures, chances are the malaria parasite will be active. Mm -hmm. Think of it even as a scissor fly, which cuts across human and animals. If we put in those factors, then we'll be able to tell three months in advance, six months in advance, that there's going to be an outbreak of malaria. And then, county governments, devolution was a good thing for Kenya because now we are more in touch with what is happening to the people on the ground, the communities that we all live in. We're able then to say, Kemsa, can you please provide us malaria medicine? And malaria in Mombasa is different from malaria in Kisumu or malaria in northern Kenya we are able then to be able to give better decisions. Otherwise, what will happen is that each county might be provided medicines they don't need, with budgets they don't have, and it becomes a challenge. So speaking of the same uh, research issue, yesterday we had uh, quite a sad event that happened that, that has stricken the, the, the country when it comes to the, the death of Bomet governor, mm -hmm. Dr. Joyce Laposo. Yes. There is one comment that some of the Kenyans were really emphasizing on mm -hmm. that I'd like to get your, your, both of your thoughts on. One Kenyan said that there is a problem when it comes to research. And now the media, when people are talking about cancers so much, yes. we're talking about health care, we're talking about how expensive it is for cancer patients to get the proper you know, treatment that they need for them to, you know, fight cancer. One, uh, one thought that came out strongly was that instead of talking about it, we need to do a lot of research about cancer. Yes. Do you agree with that? Yes, and I don't think it's just about the research. 
It's mm-hmm. about the bigger picture, trying to understand what are the driving factors that have caused this increase in the, in the different types of diseases. And you'll find that the prevalence is also different in different parts of the country. So what is causing this? And when we do this research, are the policy makers and the decision makers listening so that there is not only, you know, there's, the, there's also about uh, targeted interventions. Are we making the right interventions and are we making them in the right place at the right time? And I think that is the challenge because there's a lot of research that is being done that mm-hmm. could inform some of these decisions. But is there, as Baron was saying, there is that disconnect between all these different uh, groups of people. And I think that's where we need to work on. And, 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 and it, it means we need to work more on preventive than curative. Correct. Yes. Um, what, 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 which was what I was saying, science and the technical people need that we need to have them talk with each other more. Mm-hmm. There's a new body of evidence uh, which is referred to as indigenous knowledge, mm-hmm. which uh, from the time of um, when the, the, the missionary side coming in and asking us to leave those practices that they were backward, they were not actually backward. We need to do more investigation. When we are uh, eating food like um, umbekumbe in the village, mm-hmm. uh, Ram, I don't know which village you are from, but there's some herbs that you can eat. You come from Kisumu? Yes. Mm-hmm. So some of those herbs that you can <laughs> eat and the issues like prostate cancer. Yeah. Kenyan men above 60 now, the biggest threat is now prostate cancer. And cancer is taking everyone, yes. almost so everyone who has been diagnosed of cancer has a, uh, you know, that fear that it might be a death sentence. Mm-hmm. Development has come with uh, lifestyle diseases. Mm-hmm. Things which are not happening in the village are now happening because now there is mobility. In, in my village now, you can leave your house and get onto a border border. You are walking probably one hour before you'd get to the destination where you're going. Mm-hmm. So what are the other practices that we need to do? Sugar now has become, it's one of the causative effects of uh, which feeds cancers. We need to t- go t- take less and less sugar. But what are the sugar companies doing in terms of creating new versions of sweeteners? Because mm-hmm. we'll still need to take sugar. Uh, sugar is a is, is, is a big component of uh, African culture. Because so here we here we have a problem now that comes with the within the agricultural sector now. Correct. Because now it it has been within the public domain mm-hmm. that certain crops, certain production, certain certain areas in terms of agriculture have yes. problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, this chemical is in this product. This that chemical is in that product. Mm-hmm. Lead, mercury. I don't know what is. This is the reason why we are having an increase in cancer cases in the country? Not necessarily, because it goes, there's, there's the nutrition part, mm-hmm. but then there's also our lifestyles. Okay. We are doing more sedentary lifestyle. You come to the office for us who are in the city and you just sit. You are seated for two hours, three hours. What does it mean for your back? What does it mean for uh, the rest of your body in terms of body mass and body indexes? Uh, what does it mean in terms of what we are eating. We sit down and we're eating carbohydrates all the time. And you're not putting that carbohydrate to, to practice. In, in the village, you'd go to the farm. You'd take walks. Um, you'd spend more time being mobile, looking at the cows and so on. Mm-hmm. Now, now we are sedentary. You wake up in the morning from your bed, get into the shower, sit in traffic for one or two hours. We don't take walks. You're lucky here at KBC, you have a big compound. So <laughs> Ram, you should be every one hour, you should Take a I, I, I can go around the fence. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or, or go up the stairs. I and go come. up the stairs. <laughs> yes. I, I can leave KBC, go to the University of Nairobi, and then come back. Correct. Again. But, but now, Byron, do we really have the knowledge as a country? Do we have the resources? Do we have the research? Do we have proper uh, you know, uh, facilities when it comes to knowing about these health care problems? Because the, it affects the, us. The facilities we have, if you see what the uh, Kenya government is doing in terms of facilities, even down to the county, in terms of level four, level three, uh, level two, and level four hospitals, they are equipped. We need to do more and more, probably build the facilities in terms of uh, at the university mm-hmm. for, for research and pump in more money. Something which I'm very passionate about is we need to increase the philanthropy of the average Kenyan. We're not philanthropic. Money that we have, why don't we put it into research? Help the universities. People are not putting their money into research. Oh yes, you're, you're, you're dying with your money in the pocket. 
and, th and that is a problem. Lillian, yes. when it comes to uh, uh, investing within the agricultural sector mm. and investing in, and, and specifically, I'm talking about now research, mm. because mm. this is the area of focus, yeah. because through research, you can be able to get the, the proper data mm. for us to know what next to yeah. get the solutions. Are we really, really taking keen interest in this, looking at the current budget that we have as a country? Yes, I think that the ministry, especially the Ministry of Agriculture, there has been a lot of investment in strengthening uh, their systems and in terms of even engaging uh, non-state actors in research and listening mm -hmm. to the results of this research. And th just this year, I think earlier in the year, they launched the Agricultural Sector Transformation Strategy, mm -hmm. and that's a four, 440 million budget for the next five years. It's a 10-year strategy uh, running from 2019 to 2029, but with a budget of 440 million in the next five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the best things is that they are now talking to the non-state actors and the researchers through what they call the digital strategy. And from there, they're able to look at the innovations and the technologies that have been made and that includes speaking to us to understand what technologies exist and what re research has already been done, which models are there that could improve the way that these decisions are being made. So I think there have been investments. And finally, I feel like uh, they start, already they start discussion, these, the, the, these are common ground that these two stakeholders and the different actors in agriculture and food security are the finally starting are to speak. So there is the government, mm -hmm. and there is what I'm calling the non-state actors. The non -state, okay. So this would be the researchers, mm -hmm. the private entities, mm -hmm. the universities, mm -hmm. and all those other people who are now doing the research and doing the innovations and the technologies that would then inform policies and would also inform decision making. Yes. But now looking at that, you, you said you have a disconnect somewhere. Yes. Okay. We have the policy. We have those who are the policy makers. Yes. And we have those who implement mm -hmm. yes. the policies. So there is a disconnect somewhere. Yes. And the academia and, uh, you know, the stakeholders. You mentioned some of them. But now moving <coughs> forward, is there a way that as a country we can be able to achieve uh, universal health care and, uh, you know, for, forgo these issues that we we are having, uh, and by forgo I, I mean eradicate w the problems that we are having in terms of the uh, reducing the number of deaths that occur in the country daily. It's an interesting question. Uh, one of the things is uh, the research. We have to do more and more research, not just science for science purposes, mm -hmm. but science for impacts. That's the key word. Science for impact. Yes. Uh, we have the two bodies of knowledge. One is being uh, applied sciences mm -hmm. and research sciences, where with the research you're trying to prove, uh, you're trying to prove a point in physics, mm -hmm. the distance to the moon. But the distance between us as human beings, the distance between us, if you look at private health care and what the common one inch is accessing, what are the differences? So if we invest in the universal health care, a healthy nation is a happy nation. If you give me some time with the president, what I'll be looking at is for the next election, I'd be able to tell him you'd win the election by just focusing on health care. Because with focusing on health care, then agriculture going together with that because of health, you'll find that all the food that is produced will still be able to go and build the economy. But now there's something that, there's a discussion, and uh, as we normally say, Kenyans forget easily. Yes. And I would like to bring this up again. Mm -hmm. We had an issue that happened in Turkana, mm -hmm. where people were, you know, we were having problems when it comes to food, and uh, there was administration of food that, you know, was being given towards that uh, particular part of the country. We had the Kenyans for Kenya. Uh, issue, yeah. issue, yeah. that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, a few months ago, we had the issues that, that happened in Turkana. People are dying. Of, of, of course, it brought in a national debate. People are not dying. People are dying. Regardless mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. when there is an issue of food, mm -hmm. that was the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Food was the problem. Mm -hmm. Food was being discussed. Whether someone was dying or not, food was the problem here. 
Do you believe that uh, we, we have a disconnect even within the society when it comes to uh, getting proper facilitation? And I'm talking about equal facilitation of food to every part of the country. We were fixing the symptoms, sadly. We were not, <laughs> <laughs> we were not fixing the sickness. We were fixing the, the symptom, not the yes. sickness. I shouldn't be giving you food. I should be giving you, I should be empowering you with and food for tomorrow. And that is what we lack. That's what. No, we don't lack it. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, government has the best scientists. Government has access to the best uh, technologies to project what's going to happen even in next year and next two years. And some of the models that we are producing at the regional center through, uh, for instance, the initiative uh, Lillian is working in, which is called Savir Africa, food and agriculture is one of the pillars of that. Okay where we're trying to work more and more with governments to be able to empower them to develop, to, to look at these models and project um, what's going to happen. We can be able to see drought because of the weather patterns. Uh, again, I do want to go back to the indigenous knowledge. I come from my, my village, we are rainmakers, <laughs> in quotes. In quotes. <laughs> uh, the rainmaking <laughs> being that uh, in, in, in that clan, if you look at the Nganyi clan, uh -huh. if you type even in your Google Nganyi, yeah. You'll be, they have big, big evidence. My good friend, uh, S.C. Pisu, uh, one of the journalists, uh, is always focusing on them and has prepared nice articles on that. What they would do is study the phenomenon. If it is uh, wind, and they'd be able to tell how much rain would be coming in. Now, Kenya Met um, and ourselves, what we have done is come up with, uh, help them look at scientific models also. As the, as the rainmakers, mm -hmm. to be able to understand uh, the weather patterns, because the weather patterns have changed because of climate change. And uh, they were not able to tell that it's going to rain. So what would happen is, we have put for them uh, rain stations in their, in their shrines. When they go to the shrine, they look at the, their weather uh, measurements, but also look at the scientific measurements. So we're bringing indigenous knowledge together with technical scientific knowledge and incorporating them together because then I, it's not good for me to tell you it will rain tomorrow I should be able to tell you can you plant on Monday next week okay Lillian can give uh, some, some, some yeah, more yeah, yeah and, and putting that. into consideration that most Kenyans still rely on small family farms for a living mm -hmm. yeah we are waiting for the rains to come mm -hmm. and okay once the rains come 70% uh, of rural households begin the annual planting season and uh, do we really need to go that direction when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, giving Kenyans information uh, concerning the weather patterns, the rain, the seasons? Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, even the drought that we recently experienced, it was predicted. Yeah. Yes. Lillian. Yeah. I think um, having this information being given to the farmers is important, mm -hmm. but I think it's more important if you are acting on it for example, with climate change, the areas where maize was predominantly being grown, those zones have changed. Mm -hmm. But we have this culture that we are not willing to change, we are not willing to adapt, and the only way for there to be, you know, results is for that culture to change so that we are willing to change and adapt, especially as the climate is changing. So apart from just getting this information, are we putting it into action? Are we taking the appropriate measures to adapt? And that is the challenge. If you go to my village and you tell them not to plant maize, mm -hmm. they Yo. will not listen. Yo, um, so um, so yes. the, the, the other question is not just making this data available, mm -hmm. but also having a cultural change so that we are willing to listen, to change, so that we can adapt. And, and how far does cultural change go? Well, as the regional center, we used to be quite top heavy. We were mostly engaging with the policy makers. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, through this initiative uh, Lillian is working in, uh, which is funded by USAID, mm -hmm. what happened is that we said, listening first mm -hmm. to the communities. One of my directors likes saying that, we have two years and one month, so we should be doing more listening first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before, and, before uh, putting and, and the, and the mouth is the only one that closes. The ears don't close. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him that. <laughs> Make sure you tell him that. Yes. So, um, Lillian has mentioned about cultural practices. Yes. And then also alternative practices. Mm -hmm. What is happening out there? Today, one hectare of land or one hectare of land should 
be able to give much, much more produce. Today we're talking about vertical gardens. Mm -hmm. Can the same patch of land we can put, if you've seen this, uh, a sack can be put, uh, um, soil and other produce, and then you can put uh, small holes and put your vegetables there. So how do we maximize what we have as access uh, to the land? Because the land will keep getting smaller and smaller. Um, climate smart agriculture. It's not good enough just to say it's going to rain next month. We need to say when it will rain, what is the type of maize, if it is maize that the farmer should grow. And, and that is my exact problem. Yeah. Crop because, husbandry. Yes. And then we need to go and say, um, I see governments and county governments going in and giving um, produce, uh, for instance, uh, fertilizers to farmers. But are you educating the, f the farm on how to go uh, the, on the communities, how to use the fertilizer. The, the farmers do not have the know-how when it comes exactly. to all these things. Because uh, what the farmer doesn't know is each particular maize can only absorb a certain amount of fertilizer mm. per hour or per day. Mm. But in, in my thinking, I'll be thinking that if I put more fertilizer, I'll get more produce. We recently wanted to import maize. Yes. It, it exactly. brought in... <laughs> Sadly, yes, <laughs> it brought in a lot of debate, yes. especially when some um, uh, some of our readers say, "Yeah, we, we 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 want to import, yet there are a lot of uh, maize that is rotting mm -hmm. in Wasingishu County." Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, sadly, that's the status. I mean, there's uh, the business interests, which sometimes play against what the community needs. Uh, we did a study in 2010 with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And what we found out is that even maize which is growing on uh, areas which are protected, for instance, along the railway lines, along the roads, if you drive around in the um, villages, you'll find that that maize actually ends up in the breadbasket of the country. Because once the, f once the communities or a family has taken its share, the rest down ends up in the market. In the market, it's taken up by middlemen who are able to store it for longer and then increase the price and bring it back into the market. So how do we do better empowerment? Is there, is there a probability of having a uh, you know, zero rate when it comes to hunger? Some countries actually have achieved it. Yeah, if you go to Uganda, nobody sleeps hungry compared to Kenya. Kenya, you can go for a meal even two days. Why is that? Yet Some they, countries ha have achieved that. Yes. It's completely zero. Yes. I mean, we don't have to go far. Within Africa here, mm -hmm. um, if you look at Rwanda, if you look at Burundi, yes, we have all our political challenges, but everyone has access to at least a meal a day. Do you believe you can, achieve, you can get that level as a country? Yes, it's achievable. Mm -hmm. And we can leverage on the existing technologies to achieve some of these, for example, distribution from the high production to the low production areas. But then technology would then provide us with the answers that this is where we have the surplus, this is where we have the deficit, and you know, facilitate, identify the best mechanisms now to move these goods uh, from the high production to the low production areas. When, when it comes to food security, are we overlooking it as a country? Uh, overlooking the... Food security. I think it's pri it, it has been prioritized, but I think the interventions are not working as well as they should. Yeah, because, w yes, we are talking about it. Mm. It's, it it's on paper. Yeah. But <laughs> the problem is, is it being felt on the ground? It's like it's being overlooked on the, somewhere. The impacts are not yet being felt at mm. the scale at which we want them to be felt because mm. when you think about impact from our perspective is when we don't hear that there is hunger in Trukana. Yes. So, but then how do we, we have tomatoes and potatoes rotting, how do we um, improve the value chain so that, you know, we can either have value addition on some of these perishable commodities so that then they can be transported to the areas where there is a deficit. And this is where technology also comes in. Some of the models that we are developing and the outputs are being used to improve the crop insurance, the implementation of the crop insurance program, providing advanced data to improve the efficiency. Uh, if at this rate, I think in the last three years, by over 70%, a uh, 70% reduction in cost, providing actionable information so that the interventions that are being made are also making an impact, for example, to the farmers. If you look at the crop insurance program this year, 
already there was crop failure and over 12,000 farmers were paid at the beginning of the season. Yeah, and, and, and that is a, pr a problem. Yeah. Yes. Is it, do we have uh, proper crop insurance for small-scale farmers? The government has a subsidized crop insurance program that is being implemented and they are leveraging on some of these technologies to improve its implementation so that they are able to accurately say that in this zone, mm -hmm. the farmers, there's crop failure in this zone. So this is using technologies. So the technologies are there and there are other private companies that are also pro offering this insurance. But again, the other issue is, you know, if the farmers can afford it. So it's not just about having these insurance products being available, mm -hmm. but also the farmer's ability to afford them, the efficacy of these products, because if you try something and it doesn't work, mm -hmm. you don't take it again. Mm -hmm. But I think also there is a need to shift uh, or to change our farming systems. The dependence on rain-fed production systems is a challenge mm -hmm. because as the climate is changing, the rains are failing and then we bring in the issue of culture where we don't want to change our way of doing things, the business as usual model, we don't want to change. And that Cl climate changes, yet yeah. we still remain or retain the same same methodology yes. yeah. as before. Yes. Mm -hmm. Byron? Well, uh, water in many of our uh, communities, would say between uh, Lake Victoria region all the way down to Mombasa, water is not a challenge. Mm -hmm. But you'll find very few our communities are involved in uh, irrigation yeah. because we can be, ab be able to do production all year round. Then again, we should try and stop this aggregation of land into small, small pieces. Mm -hmm. Then also our education system, right down from, uh, I, I like CBC. CBC has been making me also become a farmer because uh, we, with my small <laughs> kids, we are planting maize, we are planting beans. So It has changed your life. It has changed. <laughs> <laughs> so through CBC, mm -hmm. we are empowering the young people to see farming as a viable option. I like what the newspapers are doing on Saturdays. Uh, there is, uh, in, in, in the major newspapers, there's always a component of agriculture. It has spurred the growth. And this all goes all the way into health. What are the good practices that we have to adapt mm -hmm. in terms of our health? What should we be eating? Uh, what we're missing on our panel here, we should have been having a nutritionist and probably somebody from the Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah, th th and, and, and we, I think next time we should have that. A combination of that. Yeah. So we can have those three groups I'm talking about, academia. And then, and then we hear why the are they people, disconnected. And, and, and the policy makers. We, and, and uh, what are our practices? Why are we eating less vegetables? Why are we eating uh, nyama choma three, four times a week? Mm -hmm. So what, what should we be doing mm, to be able to be active? And as much as we, we, we look at the, the cancers and so on, they're affecting more the middle class going up to the more, more um, higher level uh, classes than the lower ones. Or probably are we not reporting enough? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and that's the question. Are we not reporting enough? Lillian, you had mentioned about affordability. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we talk about cost effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Is it cost effective for the farmer mm -hmm. when it comes to getting these supplies? I think um, when you talk about effectiveness, again, it's not always the issue of cost mm -hmm. uh, because there are, tech, uh, there are systems that would provide some of these benefits like biochar which is really affordable, it's the charcoal waste mm -hmm. that would still improve the productivity of the soil, especially in areas with low input. So then again, it's uh, whether this information and these alternatives, viable alternatives that would boost productivity, even in areas where the farmer cannot afford the high cost inputs, mm -hmm. do they have access to this information and some of these innovative technologies that would help them to improve the agriculture without the big cost implication. But I think the other challenge is also uh, the correct use of inputs. Even yes. when we have these inputs being provided, we have the government, the counties providing um, subsidized inputs, such as fertilizers and the seeds. But are we applying the right fertilizer for our soil? So again, this is uh, information-driven decision-making. Is the farmer using the right fertilizer for their soil? 
are they using the right crop for their environment? Because I will look at what my, the, my next door neighbor is planting and ask them, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And then they'll tell me this is the fertilizer I'm using. But then is it what my soil needs? And this also links to what we are eating because if we use the, the wrong inputs, the wrong fertilizer, then we have these challenges with the type of food we are eating because then we are using the wrong inputs, a high amount of inputs, and this is coming to the food in our tables, and so it's the whole system is interlinked. And From having the right, the right information mm. at the farmer level to having the right information at the policy level, so that when these uh, subsidies are being implemented, the right, because if you give me fertilizer, I will use it. If you go to a farmer today and you give them some fertilizer, they're they going use to use it. it. Yes. But is it the right one? Because if they use the wrong one, one, uh, they are destroying their soil. So we have a lot of degradation. The productivity is also reducing. Mm -hmm. So it's about using the right inputs. It's access to the right information and using the right, that information, turning that information into action so that we use the right practices and uh, farming systems so that then we have um, you know, the food that is not already compromised on our table. So it all starts from research. And yeah. from research, mm -hmm. we get the information. Mm -hmm. But now the question is, is the information there for the farmer? Is it out there? Yes. Do they know? Yes, it's out there. So and again, as we said, so we have this information, for example, you know that it's Jogging is good for you, eating vegetables is good for you, mm -hmm. but are you eating them in the right proportions? So if you go to the doctor today and they tell you that, you know, to improve your health, you need to cut on alcohol and you need to eat a balanced diet. We know what a balanced diet is. Lilian, you, you had mentioned earlier about fertilizer, yeah, yeah. providing the fertilizer for the farmer. Yeah. But, not, but the fact that you provided that fertilizer, it doesn't mean it is the right fertilizer. Yes. That's, yes. that's yes. what you are yeah. you have to do. Yeah. You have to understand the soils. Yeah. You have to understand the soil. You have to understand the climates. Uh -huh. You have and to understand, like, like temperature, for instance, the sunlight. And, and that's why I'm asking, is that information there for the farmer? Yes. Do they know these things? Yes. Sometimes it's not there in a palatable form. <laughs> Because you, you have to, uh, as, as, a, as county government, for instance, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture in the county government, the CEC for Agriculture, mm. are they reaching out to the different communities in a language that is palatable? Mm. Uh, KBC is all over the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's one of the mediums that we should be having to explain to farmers that first, the, the soil type in Western Kenya is different from the soil type in Northern Kenya. It's different from the soil type in Mombasa. Some soils are alkaline, some soils are acidic. What do you need to do? So as county governments, the ministries of agriculture in the county, the, that is the information they need to engage with. We had a, a, a quite a sad turn of yeah. events uh, when it comes to food, because mm -hmm. we had uh, one recent uh, uh, well, research or report that was given out by one of our sister or, or colleagues when it comes to one of, one of our media houses that some you know, meat are not as authentic as they, <laughs> they should be. <laughs> it's quite alarming. It brought us care uh, yes. when it comes to the kind of chemicals that they pour on the meat and the injections they give. Kenyans are worried. Mm. It's, it's about greed. We are greed and we don't care about our next door person. As, as long as it's not affecting your immediate relative, mm. we don't care. So we, our fiber has been changed by money. So we would say that we need to work on. And that is a problem. Money, the desire for money or greed now affects even the agricultural sector. For, for the Kenyans, say, above uh, 30, our parents were bringing us up to be better than them. And better used to look at, we used to look at it better as being more financially uh, stable. Mm -hmm. Today we should be bringing up our children to make sure that they're, they're all-rounded uh, citizens. Let's talk about universal health care. Yes. How far are we when it comes to universal health care within the country? So far it, it, it was piloted in uh, some kind of counties including Kisumu and uh, other counties like Makweni already are doing some impressive work Although the debate is still there concerning facilitation and the proper medical care that is there concerning even the doctors that are there. Your thoughts on universal health care in the country? The, the governors are doing quite a good job because what they've done is uh, brought together business people, they've brought together other partners within their counties and uh, outside the country to do better 
um, studies and also better outreach to their communities in terms of universal health care. Uh, mobile clinics is one of the things that has become very impressive um, through groups like Hadi Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes even if you have a mobile clinic in a nice uh, big van like the, your OB vans mm -hmm. uh, and there are no roads, have you helped the community? So mm -hmm. how do you do better reach, outreach? And for us, we're in the mapping sector. What we'd be able to do is from space, we can take a satellite picture and be able to identify where the different populations are. Mm -hmm. and then now develop models to say how do we access these groups. Yeah, in Northern Kenya we've done studies uh, with, with the WHO where we are looking at mobile clinics to address uh, communities which are pastoralists. Because the pastoralists use the same paths continuously as they move around looking for pasture. So with satellite models we can be able to tell when there will be a high number of pastoralists coming together. And that way we can be able to have uh, outreach officers looking at crop husbandry, looking at animal husbandry, mm -hmm. looking at human health, access, reach out to them. No, but it, it means you're trying, oh, I don't know how we, We're using technology. Are. Okay. So then we can be able to come and sit with those groups mm -hmm. and now talk to them in a language that they can be able to understand. I can tell you a story about um, how sometimes you, Ram can go to a village and say, no, 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 uh, the, the, the women and children are going two kilometers to fetch water. Mm. It might not be a bad thing. So you, put, you end up putting a borehole outside the village. Mm. But you will find during the day nobody's using it. Why? It's because as they are working to fetch the water, mm -hmm. they are also discussing issues. Okay. If, I, if I was the county government, what I would do is put up a small dispensary at the water hole. All right, so, so, so you <coughs> okay, and that's debatable there, because here we're talking about the nearness, how close it is. Of course, we have models we can run and say how, what, what, what is the minimum that we should allow the borehole to be put, or it, rather the maximum. Yeah, because in as if much takes, as you, we cannot takes, consider stories to be the... If it uh, takes one hour, yes. It's too much, but we can say it's 30 minutes. So the borehole should have been put not outside the village, but mm -hmm. probably a 30 minutes walk. Exactly. So discussion should come because come out health and here. social habits go together and cultures. Some facilities, uh, Lillian, have had a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, even Machakos County governor, even at some point, had to close one uh, one of the hospitals in his own county. There is a problem in the health sector. Do you agree in that uh, statement that I've just given up? There is a problem in the health sector. Looking at how doctors are doing their job mm -hmm. and uh, the kind of effectiveness that is there in the hospitals, once a patient gets in, how fast do they get the services? Once a patient gets in, how fast do they get their uh, you know, uh, drugs that they have been pres prescribed? Mm -hmm. Is there a problem there? Yes, there is a problem because even when you can access the, the services, then you're still not sure if the doctor is qualified. Mm -hmm. And we've had these scrupulous cases of doctors who are not qualified. And so even when there is a doctor, are they qualified to make the right diagnosis? One of the things that we've been hearing recently is that one of the challenges, especially in cancer, is early detection. Mm -hmm. So there's that challenge of putting the right equipment, qualified personnel, mm -hmm. and also having access to medicine, but also sensitizing communities on, uh, uh, the, there's a saying that death begins in the stomach. So again, we go back to food. Death begins in the stomach. Yes, so mm -hmm. you have, we need to improve our food systems and our farming system so that if we eat right, we're also reducing our need for the doctor. But again, also str really strengthening the health sector so that when there is need, then we have access to the right uh, health care. We have access to qualified doctors. We are not importing them from <laughs> Cuba. Mm -hmm. We have uh, s experienced personnel within the country. But also, it's also an issue of remuneration. The, the, the if we don't pay our doctors, then they go abroad, and then we have a shortage. So I think it's an yes. entire culture that there's need for an entire culture change. You disagree with the importation of Cuban doctors? 
<laughs> it's about filling a gap which was there, but why is the gap there? Where are our doctors because they're graduating every year? Again, we're feeling, we're just <laughs> treating the symptom. What is the long term? We yeah. can have the Cuban doctors, yeah. but do what we put two, three other doctors to learn under them yeah. and hand over? But where are our doctors because we have a lot of trained, the people like are Ram, graduating every year. Maybe a question for you, mm. where, where is your intern? <laughs> they are everywhere. Who's studying what you're doing? <laughs> yes, who, are. Who, who are you handing over? Will there be a gap if you decided to fall sick today? Or if I leave the show? Uh, or if you leave the show. Your boss or if, 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 if I'm sick or something? Yes. Oh, okay. I don't so know. So how do we make it continuous? So with mm -hmm. the Cuban doctors, do we have understudies mm -hmm. to fill their gap? If uh, one leaves or decides to go back home, what happens? The, does care in those facilities which they have been put up in stop. But uh, what is quite ironical is looking at the number of unemployed youths in the country, yes. it is alarming. Mm. True, true. Yet at, uh, at the same time, we are importing workers from other places to come into the country to do the same job that mm -hmm. our own youths have taken more than four years studying. Yes. in the universities, in their respective colleges and technical training institutions. Mm -hmm. Where is the gap here? And if you look at uh, the, the, the rate that we are talking about when it comes to uh, the number of deaths that occur in hospitals vis-a-vis yes. uh, uh, -vis the number of qualified doctors that are there, it's not like we don't have doctors in the country mm -hmm. to, who can cater for these uh, patients, do we? Well, we, we, we need to study the Indian model. Why is India healthcare so good that we are really looking up to them and always going to India? Um, I think it's, it's uh, the, the presidency in Kenya which mentioned that they want to focus on that. Uh, why don't we create small Indias here in Kenya? So again, this comes in, uh, in the academia. What, is, what needs to be done in the academia? I'm happy uh, the universities, Jomo Kenyatta and even KU are putting up health facilities to do more training in the health sector. Mm -hmm. And we should be able to pump in more funds and say, as Kenya government or any other government in, 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 in our region, can we make sure that these universities have become top-notch, carry out more research? And that's why we need regulations in the university. We need regulations, yes, but also we need to see what is working. We don't oh, need yeah. to invest in the wheel. Okay. Yes. We need to find out where the problem is and, remo and, and uh, from the roots uh, of uh, And fix it. it. Mm and fix it. Is there a reason of, of uh, is there a cause of alarm when you look at the rate of uh, uh, the number of doctors that, that, that are there? Because some say, I was looking at one statement by one of the university lecturers in or, or one of our you know, close universities here. He said that we do not have sufficient number of personnel who handle patients in hospitals. Do you agree with that, Lilian? I think that's a challenge in most of, especially in the government hospitals. And while a lot of effort has been done, I think there's still room for improvement. But Please again, as Byron is saying, there's also the need to adopt a holistic approach yes. to healthcare, not just the... Look at one side. Know, not just, just treatment. At, yeah, treatment, just treatment. but yes. prevention and even alternative uh, sources of medicine. And alternative yeah. medicine also. No, do we have manpower? Just say it, we need to, to say it as it is, man. Do we, have, <laughs> do we have the manpower? Well, if you, you've seen in some counties uh, that the doctors are on strike. It's a very unfortunate scenario. Yes. Because doctors, according to the Hippocratic Oath, um, their first line of uh, activity is to save human life. Mm -hmm. But it's sad that they are going on strike. So there's the argument that should the doctors have remained in central government, or mm -hmm. should have that function be de have, have been devolved? Um, so we, we need to look at this. You, you probably at, at your next show you need to have the, the, the medical uh, boards <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the unions to have a candid talk. Which they won't. Which the, they are might not be, The studio might become hot. <laughs> It will be on fire. <laughs> it will be on fire. It will be on fire because and the debate now comes in when it comes to doctors' pay. Yeah. Nurses have... Uh, yes. even, even palliative so care. Nurses, are, uh, nurses and teachers are the seed of this country. Those are the people who are the most active. So what do we need to do 
do to empower them more and more. Looking at the uh, uh, facilitation uh, in terms of the proper medical uh, cover that we have, uh, yes. insurance covers, are we heading towards the right direction? Let me start with you, Lillian, and then I'll come to you. Mm -hmm. I see you're burning up there. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think some counties have already created a model where this uh, is better, this improved coverage in terms of uh, access to quality health care. Mm -hmm. And I think NHIF is also increasing the coverage in terms of some of these uh, diseases, like uh, some of disease, the diseases uh, that, that, like cancer, some of uh, chemotherapy is already covered, part of it is already covered. But as we are saying, there's still a lot of room for improvement. But is Thank it com covered as much as it ought to be? Because mm. especially treatment for, mm. example, cancer is it's expensive. expensive. It's very expensive. Yeah. Yes. So is it really covered as it should be? We should focus on children. We should be co focusing on looking at how to prevent reduce it. and prevent. Uh, because uh, the, 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 the funds will never be enough. See, no matter how much we put on the mean, budget. Yeah. You, you get uh, into a private hospital and even if you're medical cover, per day that bill is going so, so high. But then what do we do? What, do, what should Kenyans do? We are the common monainchi, the mm -hmm. common one, you know, the Wanjiko is there, wants to get... Lillian to mentioned, look, let's look at the value chain of agriculture. Okay. As Lillian mentioned, our treatment should start in the stomach. Mm -hmm. That value chain, from what we're putting in as farm produce, is it good, is it healthy, is it right? From our practices on our tables, as we eat, from our exercise as we go around on our day-to-day -day activity, let's focus on getting that right. Then we can go into health. Starting from when a child is uh, conceived, as, as, as uh, a mother, when the child is conceived, what are the, what are the practices that we are going into that? When the child is born, vaccines. Uh, now there's vaccines even for young girls with cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. we, should be, we should be able to have that. If the, co the cost should be minimal. In I'm some not, hospitals, it's 2,000, 3,000 more, maybe. I don't know if both of you remember a case here where there was a child who was injected with a vaccine that almost killed him. Yes, yes it, it's happened. It's happened. Uh, but is it, were the doctors well trained? Were the nurses trained? As Ministry of Agriculture, is it doing enough policing to make sure that <laughs> there's good care going around? Was maybe the nurse was overworked also. So. Why should it, we have our. It's, 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 it's multiple. Um, there are multiple issues. reasons. There are multiple reasons. Okay, looking at all these issues, one, let's say the nurse was overworked. Mm -hmm. do, do, then do we conclude that there is let's sufficient... Start, was, was the nurse well trained? Okay, was the nurse well trained? Let's are are we saying do we, do we have insufficient uh, uh, you know, resources and information out there to train our doctors and nurses? Because Lillian alluded earlier concerning cancer, cancer patients. Most of them end up having misdiagnosis mm -hmm. at, you know, from the first stages yes. of cancer. So yes. by the time that they realize that they have cancer, it is too late yes. or it's almost uh, too severe for them. Yes, yes. So do we, have the, do we have lack of the know-how know when it comes to giving? There is know-how and the know-who. That's why I, when I say <laughs> you're, you're, you're understudy. <laughs> Uh? For you to get to the level you are now, you, you trained under somebody. Yes. You learnt. Mm -hmm. But some people can just come and sit there and they start off on the job. That is one maybe out of a thousand. But others learnt on the job or went through training. So is the quality of training good? If we look at Kenya Medical Training College, what is the institution doing in terms of building capacity of its staff continuously on new practices? If I'm a teacher, is I should be taken for training at least two, or two times or three times in a year mm -hmm. to increase the body of knowledge that I know, that I can impact on my students. Otherwise, what I'll be training my students is what is five years old, ten years old. Is our, we, is, we look is, at the whole value chain. Is our quality of education quality, if I'll put that? Yes. That, is that the quality of our, of, our, of, our, of our trainers good? You can have all the good facilities, but you don't have good quality of trainers. Lydia, is it good? 
I think there it's, needs to be more st uh, strict uh, regulations and, you know, we need to have it is very good strict. To answer you. <laughs> it is good because uh, people from the region are coming to Kenya to, for medical care. And we are running away from Kenya to go to another People from the region are coming to Kenya for medical care. Yes. Cuban doctors are coming in. We are, we are importing Cuban <laughs> yes. doctors. Yet our own trained doctors are going outside. Yeah. Yes. To provide services to other people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you go to some of the Southern African countries, it's Kenyan doctors who are there. And they are all over the world. Mm -hmm. They are all over the world. Kenyan doctors. Yes. Kenyans, we are ready to go out and uh, find out what's happening on the other side. Is it... Uh, sufficient for the Wanjiko when it comes to, you know, uh, getting the drugs. Now here we're talking about the, the drugs, the medication, the prescriptions that are there. Different people have different problems, have different diseases. Can we really say that we have the proper supply of uh, drugs to the Wanjiko? Kemsa is doing a good job, yes. And uh, working together with the county governments to provide universal health care. Only with that what goes in is that probably there is no good uh, body of evidence in terms of how the drugs are being used, what is the, what is the solution or alternative to drug A, drug B or drug C. Mm -hmm. So that information flow is what is, is lacking and which is what the strength of uh, the regional center is, is that developing those information systems. We are experts at developing information systems that can guide uh, decision making in a timely and informed manner. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Let me come to you, Linan, as we bring this discussion to a close here. Um, looking at the state of the nation, some say that universal health care, the big four agenda, mm -hmm. food security, SDGs. Will, e e yes, SDGs. Do you think that uh, we really took quite enough time? to think over it, mm. to find out that this is the strategy that we need to, to take. Did we take time to strategize on how we can achieve food security, universal health care, manufacturing, and the rest of the, uh, you know, big for general, like housing? Did we, did we really strategize and think first before we started implementing it and putting resources towards it to make it achievable? Because right now, it's bleak. Uh a lot has been done and a lot of investments have been made which I think are sound but I think that we also need to change uh, this expectation and you know start looking at what we can do with the limited resources that we have mm -hmm. because a lot of sound policies and interventions and investments have been made so the two gaps that I see one is the regulations mm -hmm. are we making sure that these interventions are getting to the right people the quality of those interventions, if you look at medicine, are we getting uh, good quality medicine? Mm -hmm. um, are these interventions being implemented in the right way?